Starting with the lower division courses, what were the life sciences like? It was sort of an overview of all the things you could do in life science. Yeah. I was getting nervous because I was I was taking LS one and I didn't like it at all. Like we were just learning a bunch, a lot about like the different eras of evolution and what happened in each of those eras. But you have to memorize all of those and then memorize like all the plants and like living beings in each of those. But I, I don't think the actual like evolutionary classes were like that. You don't have to memorize the years and stuff. You do learn a lot about like how things evolve and then you have to construct theories around it. So I think the baseline of life science is to understand other people's theories and then right. so to gather everything, all the information we have so far. And then later on in your upper divs, you use that information to develop your own Got theories. It. Were you nervous because LS1 uh, powers up to the biology major and you weren't really interested in LS1? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I was nervous because it was. It felt like if that was what I was supposed to be studying for the rest of my college career, I I felt like I would have been wasting it. Totally, yeah. Um, How did that concern play out? I just thought like, well, I'm going to go into LS. Yeah. So whether or not I go into bio or switch majors, I still have the lower divs. So I just like didn't really think about it. As far as how LS1 part up to your upper division, do you felt like it was your upper divisions were a big repeat? Like it matched up pretty pretty evenly? Or? It was. Uh, the beginning is always sort of repeat. There's always Darwin. There's always the P's. There's always like, you know, like the <laughs> set of things that you learn yeah. in high school and college. Like it's repeated. Yeah. Um, but the thing is like the repeat makes sense because then you extend from like that. Those are the, I think of it as the roots, the seeds of the okay. major and then you go from it. Okay. Um, so the upper divs build on top of those fundamentals. So you were taking stats 13. It says statistical methods for life science. Yeah, uh, so students. so when you're in life sciences, you take uh, math that's related to life science. Right. So you have life science math, like one, two, three, or mm -hmm. 30 ABC. And then you have the stats for life sciences. Okay. So what they do is, uh, the difference between this and normal math, I think, probably is just they take the lab results from life sciences and then they ask you how you would interpret it. Do you remember any examples from the class? Yeah, so in 30A or 30B, um, we did predator and prey models. Uh, so we would understand how scientists use math to interpret their data when they collect it, especially in the field of ecology. Yeah. So we, we were studying like predator and prey of, I think, I forget which region, it was like two specific animals. And then it just like turned out into this like spiral. And, and so you understand how population dynamics work and how that was calculated Nice. Um, in theory. And then last lower division class, LS23L, this is research for life science, right? Yeah. When I was in college, I was looking for labs to work in um, as uh, extracurricular. Yeah. And a lot of labs at UCLA actually don't let you in unless you've taken this class. Because you don't have, if you don't have any like previous lab experiences, they don't want you to like drop their test tubes or yeah. like f kill their animals. Set the place on fire. Yeah. This class is basically an intro to how you do things. How do like, you, how do you hold, Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Okay. And they just like don't want you to, they want to make sure that you know how to handle yourself when okay. you're in class when so you're in a lab elementary basic laboratory what, yeah it was it was very very low we looked at goldfish and like calculated their oxygen levels and then uh -huh. manipulated it to see like what happened sure. and then wrote a paper on it what is funny is um that was one of the easier classes that quarter mm -hmm. but the thing is upper div felt like 23l everywhere <laughs> Oh, did it? Yeah. Twenty three L amplified. Yeah, just like because it like that that ease everywhere. Oh, you mean the the simplicity or yeah. the going the flow? Yeah, yeah. Because I think lower divs they is the weeder like calls it they call it the They're weeder tough. classes for They're the for, a reason. for yeah. the pre meds, and so if you can get through that part, then your upper divs are smooth sailing. But I don't awesome. know if that's the same for all of the majors. It's especially that for EEB, I think. Okay, for the biology. Awesome. Yeah. In this intro class to your major, EE Bio 100, what was that like? EEB 100 was mostly talking about the different categories of behavior between animals. Um, and it talked about different lab techniques, different ways that we track animals in the field. This class had three professors and <laughs> 
there's a lot of classes like that where they have three combined professors and they yeah. each teach a section of the class. I think the reason they do that is because they want you to have experience of being with a specific professor mm -hmm. um, with a different kind of mindset each in each of the fields. So the one that I liked the most, her name was Allison Lipman. She did studies on turtles. Yeah. And um, I remember her the most because she was very passionate about tracking turtles and like how our environment has had changed like their way of migrating and their um, their population. You're and saying the human impact on yeah. how that's affected turtles and their yeah. migratory patterns yeah. and habitats. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. some devastating stuff, I bet. Yeah, yeah. EB100 was like an overview of different things you could get out of EEB in okay. the upper div. So this is your spring quarter of your junior year. You took EE Bio 186 Evolutionary Medicine. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from that class? Evolutionary Medicine was uh, Professor Barbara Madison. She wrote a book called Zubiquity, and it's basically about how animals have evolved and how that's related to us. She was talking about how animals also have heart disease and what, what the causes of those are and how we have heart disease and how it fits into our evolution. And it's been, evolutionary medicine as a field is to understand how we've evolved and how we aren't adapted to the way the world is right now. And oh, that's that why we're, we're not sick. Adapted. Yeah. Oh, that's why we have obese populations because yeah. it's like the adaptation to starvation, right? Yeah. And the, the thing that I loved most about the class was the fact that when we have, when we get sick, it's natural. It's a way of our body telling us like, this isn't what we were fit for. And it's actually like our adaptation to react wow. that way. For example, when your, your cells are attacking yourself, it's meant to help you, but it like somehow malfunctions. It, it goes rogue. Yeah, so the, the, the idea that everything that happens was always meant to help you yeah. was beautiful to me. That, that the fact that like it That's was- That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, you said about getting sick, because when someone gets sick, they tend to hate their body yeah. for kind of letting them down. But when you think about it, you should be thankful for your body. It's trying its hardest to protect you. Yeah, and, and I, I generally le lean toward classes like that where it sort of, it keeps your mind in this holistic view of the world where things are happening and you don't try to just put a band-aid over it, but you mm -hmm. try to find the root of it, understand it, and then deal with it from mm. there. Um, and that, that class was that. That's crazy. So it really flips your understanding. Yeah. So now we're in your fall quarter of your senior year. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you took Introduction to Marine Science as well as Marine Science Laboratory. So Marine Science, let's break it down. What's very outstanding about this class was the fact that you don't really think about water. You don't really think about ocean. You don't really think about how the earth has evolved. This class sort of took the earth, the non-life, the, the geology of the world, oh. and talked about how animals interact with it, which you don't really think, you always think like, oh, you're bio, so you learn life sciences. Oh, you're geology, so you learn non-life. Oh. But you don't think like, okay, in both of those, those two things are interacting, so like, they're not separate. Super they're symbiotic. together. Yeah. Yeah. It, reminds you that this earth is everyone's like it's the animals it's all the nations and that we all live on the same earth and we should not be fighting against each other but to be yeah. helping each other to make the earth better because we all live on it That's like incredible. at the end of the day and then i learned a lot about how the ocean is, is getting polluted and how global warming affects the, yeah. the sea lives uh, it, it's impact. a very different like you would think like oh I can just go watch it on um, National Geographic sure. and like it'd be the same it's, it's different it's different because you you definitely like get a feel of you feel it deeper when you understand it here's what we found and this is what's going to happen according to the math and according to the evidence what's going to happen to our earth that's a lot more powerful than just like seeing pretty pictures of right. animals watching like, watching an hour of, flying around um, yeah bottles floating in mm -hmm. the sea really yeah. a, a 10 week understanding kind of helps you really yeah and he was so so into it like at the end of lectures yeah. he's talking about how his quote like was stuck with me for the longest time that there's more tomorrows than there are yesterdays for us and so we have to be 
motivated to do something about our tomorrows. And he talks about he has more yesterdays than tomorrows because he's older and he has to build our tomorrows with us. And that was just like, that was so powerful. Um, yeah. I really, I really liked him. That's some wisdom that should put into action, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you guys do any field trips in this class? Um, so the 109 had a 109 lab, which that they took us to Santa Monica like almost every week. Yeah. Um, it was like a whole project of us just like going to Santa Monica. We had to figure out what kind of like project we wanted to do and then mm -hmm. just do it. Yeah, so we, yeah. we did a we did a study on sand crabs and how trampoline might affect affect sand crabs. Totally. Um, yeah. So like it was it was fun just like because you get to go to the beach in the middle of the school week and <laughs> sum you up. yeah yeah some powerful stuff in that class good vibes that year this class is called anthro 124p so i signed up for the class and it was honestly like hands down one of the best classes i've taken at ecla just because it totally put you in the shoes of the evolutionary biologist like why it was so important because it talks about how humans have evolved and how all of our emotions have been have evolved throughout time because of our sexual behavior and like how, how that's a drive for yeah, our emotions. Yeah, and how that how that becomes a part of our everyday life. And just like understanding why we are the way we are is powerful because what people don't understand is like when they think of evolution, they feel like it's limiting. It makes you not believe in things anymore. But the thing about human evolution is that it makes you understand why you are the way you are so that it wouldn't control you. So if you're mad at someone, mm. you think to yourself, okay, I'm reacting this way because I don't want them to step into my territory. It's, it's like, part so of your nature. I, yeah, it's, it's my nature, but I don't have to fall victim to it. You don't have to, to act it. on it. Yeah. Got it. And it helps you take control of yourself. What yeah. did you do in the class? Just lecture. Okay. And we read papers and we have more lecture and they he he had the class designed so well and he was the only professor who didn't use slides at all. He only talked. Only his voice. So you had to yeah. pay attention and I remember taking so many notes from him. Um I still remember a lot of things from that class yeah. specifically. Um and I that I think that's the epitome of education, like actually using it something that sticks with you yeah and right. having you grow from what you learn 